Hi friends, come to stand at the top of your mat. Ground through the four corners of your feet. Pick your toes up, spread them wide, press them back down, root yourself. Roll the shoulders from your ears, close the eyes a moment. Find balance. Find breathing. Hold on and inhale, gently open eyes. Reach arms out, up, overhead, fingers interlace, palms to sky. Exhale, bring the hands behind you. Take hold of your elbows. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, turn to one side. Inhale, gazing up. Exhale, gazing behind you. Maybe up. Inhale, come center. Exhale, second side. Inhale, gazing up a bit. Exhale, gazing behind. Maybe up. Inhale, brings you center. Exhale, releases arms. Inhale, out and up, palms to sky. Exhale, hands move behind you. Find Prastanjali, palm to palm, behind the heart center. Inhale, opens the heart. Exhale, turns to the first side. Let an inhale bring you center. Exhale, takes you to the second side. Inhale, brings you center. Exhale, release the hands. One more, Hasta Vinyasa. Inhale, arms and out and up. Fingers interlace, palms press up to the sky. Exhale, bring the hands. Behind you, find Prastanjali. Again, palm to palm, press together behind your heart center. You have a little upper back bend, and on your exhale, bow forward. Keep breathing. As you press through four corners of feet, inhale, lifts you up, Surya Namaskar. Inhale, the heels lift with the arms, fingers interlace, palms to sky, Tadasana. Exhale, Ardha Utkatasana to start, half squat. Let it be an inhale that guides fingertips to toe tips. Hold breath and hop to your plank. Let it be a low plank and move through and forward to your cobra or your up dog. Your knees would be up and the tops of feet would be down in your up dog. Bending knees or rolling over toes to your down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Check in with your second and third toe in line with heel. Invite your knees to come in line with heels and second and third toe. Bend knees, lift heels, gaze to the thumbs, give elbows a tiny pull in and we'll hop to the top of mat again hold breath and then breathe once you arrive in your half forward fold and exhale to your fold slow steady breath as we warm up filling the space between the shoulder blades Arms reaching out and up, finding your way to the mountain hands, making their way back down to your midline, through your midline, to your heart center. Inhaling, finding link. Exhaling, 
Releasing full squat if you wish, the full Utkatasana. Inhale, fingertips to toe tips. Again, hold the breath as you hop. See about hopping to a low plank. And then breathing your way through the shoulders to your cobra or your up dog. Rolling over toes, bending knees, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Grounding. Noticing fingers, four corners of palms. Heels moving toward the mat, hips moving toward the wall behind you. Preparing to hop or even float toward the top of your mat. See about holding the breath as you do so. Inhale as you arrive. Exhale, full forward fold if you like. Take hold of the backs of the ankles. Meeting at the top of your mountain. Let's take it through one more time. And we'll meet in your downward facing dog. Breathing as you're ready. Remember in the classical yoga, we tend to hold the positions longer and breathe longer. Once you're in downward facing dog, go ahead, lift the right heel up in line with the right hip. And pull that top knee underneath you until you can push through the back foot, find your way to lunge and transition to your warrior one. Your back heel settles down, your arms come on up. Perhaps palms together or temple, steeple mudra. Give that back hip a gentle reminder to move forward a bit. As you find your trident or goddess arms, bring your hands behind you and find Prastanjali behind the heart. Once again, open the heart and on an exhale, bow into your devotional warrior. Your front knee is near your front shoulder. The four corners of both feet are rooted and grounding. If you like, you may place a prop under your head. As you press into both feet evenly, inhale brings you up to the warrior one position. We'll release the hands to the front of heart center. Lift your back heel and step forward to your half squat. Your front foot, the top foot is flexed. On an inhale, lengthen, move into your dancing Shiva, your Nataraj Asana. Gazing to a point that doesn't move. Allowing your top foot to press back a bit into your hand. Inhale, 
inhale, come center, transition to your Vrik Shasana tree pose. If you wish the half lotus, please, you can always hook your foot with a belt or an old tie, and then your matching hand moves behind your back so that it can reach forward and hook your big toe, and then your other hand reaches up. Middle finger to thumb for patience, courage, determination. And coming out the way you came in. Nice work. Let's take it through the sun salutation. Once again, follow your inhale to lengthen. Follow your exhale to release. Follow your breath, it knows the way. And this time the left heel lifts up in line with your hip, pressing through both heels, pulling top knee underneath as you push through back foot, finding your lunge, back heel settles, Virabhandrasana one, Back hip giving a gentle reminder to move forward. Hands move behind you, Prastanjali. Back salute. Exhale, devotional warrior. Pressing into four corners of both feet, lifting up to your warrior one position. Go ahead, find your trident goddess arms for a moment. And then as you bring hands to heart center, lift your back heel and move all the way forward to your Ekapada Ardha Utkakasana half squat. As you press through the grounded foot, returning to stand, dancing Shiva Nataraj Asana. That top foot moves forward and you find your way to Vrikshasana, tree pose. With the half lotus, if you're working on it, you can have your other hand hold the foot while your matching hand moves behind you and your fingers take hold of your big toe eventually. So if you have a, an old tie or a belt around and you want to do that, use that too. And remember, it's a practice. There is no finish line. Coming out the way you came in, releasing. Maybe take it for a walk. Surya Namaskar. Move with your breathing. Working on the hop to the low plank.
So this time, from your downward facing dog, lift your uh, right toes up as high as they'll go. Bend the top knee and let those toes reach on over to the side as if they were going to tap someone or something. And your gaze might go just a bit underneath your right underarm. Pull that top knee underneath. Step forward to your lunge. And this time let's invite the back foot all the way forward to make its way outside of the front foot. So your legs are crossed. And now let your front foot push into its tippy toes while you come up and set up for your eagle, Garudasana. Your front foot has options to press into the outer edge of your calf or you hook your toes around your calf and bind. Your bo both knees are bending. So remember that back knee tends to stay longer. Give it permission to bend. Switch it up, let the opposite arm compared to the leg that's on top, be on top. Your bottom hand will begin to reach through your top palm. Gaze to a point that doesn't move. And if you like, your fingers reach up and then forward. Inhale up, exhale, unwind. Find that beautiful five-pointed star. Hands to your hips. You can heel toe it, toe heel it, or even bend your knees and hop it back together. Surya Namaskar. Reaching, lengthening on that good inhale, inviting prana. Exhale, releasing, inviting off and up. This time, as you make your way to Adho Mukha Svanasana, it's the left uh, toes that are reaching up as high as they'll go. Top knee bends and reaches over your gaze is through your left underarm. Pull that top knee underneath and forward. Once again, find the lunge and this time invite the back foot to move outside the front foot. Setting up for Garudasana again, your front foot can press into the ball of foot. Come on up. Set your base up first. So all that's situated below, helping you to balance. Both knees bend. Binding if possible. Inviting opposite arm on top, tops of hands together. Fingertips reach up, and then, as you wish, bowing forward. Inhale, lifting you up. Exhale, unwinding, finding that beautiful five pointed star. Hands to your hips, bring the feet on a bit of diagonal. Knees bend, toes lift, working with the muscles and the feet to arch the feet and finding your goddess arms. Noticing, noticing if that tailbone is reaching behind you a bit too much and bringing it underneath you, staying still or rocking side to side. Inhale brings 
to center, hands to your hips. This time, press into the balls of feet, lift the heels, bend the knees, tailbone underneath you, goddess arms. Coming all the way down to your goddess squat. Elbows moving inside the legs, palms pressing, lengthening spine. Releasing hands and finding your way to table pose. From table pose, we'll press the right heel back, pull the knee underneath, knee moves towards your thumb. If you'd like to place a cushion under your uh, front hip, you're welcome to. Your front foot might want to make its way to the edge of your mat. Notice if you're leaning very far on one side and Give yourself a little lift of pulling it up. Find your wings in your pigeon pose. And begin to bow forward. Some of us may start on the forearms. You may find your front heel beginning to press just inside your hip. If your knee is bothered, you may start to move your foot a bit more out to the side. You'll see about releasing the forehead. To your forearms or to the floor as your arms lengthen. As you lift your head and heart, the hands make their way to your front leg and will bend the back knee so that you can reach for your ankle or your foot or your pant leg. And this is a place where that belt or towel or old tie might come in handy. And then some of us like to ground through the front fingers or some of us like to find a mudra. Perhaps you'll invite both arms to reach for that same back ankle or foot. Slow, steady breathing. Jai breath guiding you. But now as you release the other hand, maybe you'll bring this back foot forward a bit and see about the foot making its way inside the crook of your elbow and we'll set up for a, a mermaid as some would call it. So this front hand again can press, it can find a mudra or it can reach all the way up and over fingers finding each other slow steady breathing <sighs> we haven't been here in a while give yourself time and as you release we'll bring that back leg all the way forward and set up for double pigeon. So quite different, you know, than in your cross-legged pose, your back foot is now your top foot. Your front foot is now your bottom foot and you encourage the bottom foot to come forward so that the knee is above the ankle and this ankle over here is above the knee. And if that is not a place for you to be today, let the leg that was in the back remain in the back and take your seated stage. And you know, you may always prop a blanket or a block or whichever you might have at home underneath your seat. And that should help hips and knees 
find a little more comfort. Now, some of you may be saying, okay, I need a little more. So you'll inhale, lengthen, and exhale, release forward. You might release your forehead to your forearms, your forearms to a block or two. You might be moving down to the floor. So give yourself what you need. Notice any rounding and inhale, invite space. Interlace fingers, press palms up and away. Exhale, release. Undo those good legs. Lean back a bit. Bring your feet as wide as the mat and windshield wiper slowly but surely from one side to the other. Next time you come center, we'll cross the ankles and find our way to table once again. This time your left heel presses back and that knee moves forward to your thumb, setting up for a pigeon on the other side. You know a prop under your front uh, sit bone if that helps you. And you'll see where this front foot needs to be closer to the edge of the mat, closer to your hip. It can be helpful to check in on the second and third toe in line with your heel in the back. Ankles tend to twist a bit there. Finding your pigeon wings. Resilience. Those pigeons seem to be able to adopt and improvise and live in all kinds of places throughout our big beautiful world and then as you release your wings we'll make our way forward once again find your way there give yourself what you need as far as where your forehead will rest On an inhale, beginning to lift your head and heart as you press into your fingertips. Again, we'll bend that back knee, and this time we'll let the matching hand reach for the ankle or the foot. You know your front hand might ground through fingertips. You might find a mudra. You know a mudra is a connection typically with the fingers, but we have other connections we make with the body in our practice as well. And then maybe you'll invite this ooh, front arm to reach back as well. And then let's see about our, our merman or our mermaid on this side. So your matching hand is bringing that foot a little further forward until you can make your way into the crook of the elbow. Woo. This is my tight side today. And your front arm grounds, finds the mudra, or reaches up and over. And those fingers find each other. Woo. And you breathe. And then releasing and letting that back leg make its way forward and you know you can find the seated sage again so your back leg would remain a bit back and you're allowing your six bones to release where that back leg becomes your top leg ankle to me and then the ankle that's underneath may need a little slide forward so that your shins are parallel 
right? Different than your Padmasana position. If you did so on the other side, you can inhale, lengthen, and exhale, bow forward, giving yourself what you need, not what I need, not what your neighbor needs, but what you need, lengthening, opening up. Fingers interlace, palms press away, you lift and lengthen, and we'll undo those good legs. Once again, lean back a bit, keep the heart open, the spine long, undo the legs, and you're pressing into palms of hands as you windshield wiper, your heart is open, so your spine is not rounding. Next time your knees move to one side, keep the legs as they are and reach up and open up. Find your way through center space and move on over to the other side. And next time, you find your way center. We'll have a little inversion time before we rest. So if you have a blanket, take a moment, find your blanket. You could always uh, fold your mat so you have a little more support for your head. And we'll bring the forearms down. Your fingers will interlace, your elbows are shoulders width, and where the crown of the head and the forehead meet are touching down inside this cup of your hands. You're pressing into forearms, pressing into crown of head, and lifting up out of the neck. So your upper back for sure is involved. You press into your tippy toes and take your feet for a walk until you start to find your balance line. Some of us will lift one leg and then the other. You might continue to work with your balance there or you might pull your knees in towards your belly. Keep your feet active and work with your balance here. You can stay right here. You may do one leg lifting and then the other. You might take a moment in child's pose. Keep practicing. Give yourself some upside down time. That was a few balancing moments. Let's give it one more if you don't mind. So you know if you um, prefer to have tripod in place, that's another way to spend time upside down. And the idea classically is to find the posture where you're um, most comfortable because then you want to be able to stay and breathe there. So it's fun to try them all, but find what you feel most comfortable with. My head will be in front of my hands now. My elbows are bent back onto the tippy toes, and now my elbows move in toward my body and my knees find the backs of my upper arms to press into, and then the knees pull in and up. And from here, you might whew, start to lift those legs. So see what works for you. Take a moment, take a breather. And of course, you know, if the 
headstand is not for you. You're welcome to practice shoulder stand and either of these poses can, any of these poses can be done with the wall or on your blanket. So maybe one more try, see what we have. Finding your hair pose, your fingers interlace, it's as if you're creating rabbit ears. And now because you're grounded, you may lift up and roll toward the back of your head. And finally, releasing, and we'll take a moment of rest. If you'd like to take more than a moment of rest, you know you're welcome to pause your um, video and join us when you're ready. So have your layers nearby if you like. Bring your legs long, bring your arms long. Be sure there's safe space and lower. Until your back is resting, bring your arms out to the side, bring your feet as wide as the mat windshield wiper once again. And next time the knees move to one side, keep them there. Lift uh, the foot that seems like it's more in front and let it be on top of the knee that seems like it's more behind. You're always welcome to place props under your knees if it's helpful. Your gaze would be to the ceiling. Of course, you may close your eyes or you gently turn the head away from the knees. Inhale brings your head center and you undo the legs in order to move the knees to the other side. Again, the foot closest to the knee that seems like it's in front lifts and rests on top of the knee that seems as if it's behind. Choose your gaze wisely, check in with those good shoulders. your legs rest, let your arms rest, find your layer if you like, you can cover all of yourself or just part. permission to rest, all of the systems that make you run. You know when we rest, the parasympathetic nervous system in particular kicks into all is well mode. 
you were upside down a bit, you may want to take your chin gently and move it toward one shoulder and then the other. Allowing your breath to become softer. Awakening through fingers and toes, your ankles and wrists. Through a nice big stretch. And a gentle hug. And you can rock and rest on one side. You might rock and roll forward and back so you return to your seat feel free to find your layers as we do a, a bit of breath work your hands can rest open now receiving a palabati short sharper breaths, focusing on the exhale, leaving the nostrils, your mouth is closed, inhale fully, exhale completely, inhale more than you think you can, and begin. all the breath, excuse me. <coughs> Release anything else that comes along that needs to go. The breath is meant to clean us out. It's also said to help us lose weight. Navi Shodana to balance the brain. Your right hand prepares the second and third finger bow in, the fourth and fifth stay out. Your right thumb closes right nostril, you exhale left. Inhale. Close, pause, you exhale right. Inhale. Close, pause.
next time you exhale right, reach your hands to heart centered mudra. We'll close with the healing sounds for uh, sun, ra, for moon, ma, for earth, da, and for infinity, sa. And then to bring it all together, sa, se, so, hum. And you know this um, mantra meditation can be done for yourself for healing, for a dear one that you're wanting to offer healing wishes, energy to, or for someone you may not even know, and of course for our dear Mother Earth as well. If you like, your elbows come in towards your rib cage and you have a bend at your wrist. So there are nadis throughout the body, various points of energy. And when we bend the wrists, we activate them. Your palms are open and we'll uh, chant. If you prefer to sing, go right ahead. It's heart opening. If you want to listen, that's fine too. After inhale. Ramadasa sa se so hum. So there's a slight pulling in and up on the first sa and the last hum. After inhale. hands to heart center and feeling all of that good healing energy you've just created for yourself and therefore for others. We know how contagious that good, healthy, positive energy can be. And now you know poetry pulls at my heartstrings, so I'm telling myself if I put my glasses on, I won't cry. <laughs> Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon and stars pour their healing light on you. To you, friends. Be well. Know that I'm holding safe, healthy space for each and every one of you. And I look forward to the day when we practice together in the space again. But until then, thanks for joining me. Namaste. Sat Nam. Take good care.